Okay, so not a lot of people know about this, but I do poetry as a way of coping. Like, it's my other, only other coping skill besides listening to music. And I was just reading some to my mom, and she told me I should make a video, because apparently they're that good. So, this entire thing isn't full of poems. Neither is this, but both of them have some poems in it, and I feel... I thought that, well, maybe I can share some, maybe all of, nope, not all of them. I can share some of my poems, and maybe some of you guys can relate, and hopefully this helps you too. And my mom told me that maybe when I'm older, I can do poetry as, like, a lifestyle. Like, it's my job, basically. And I'm like, you don't know. But... So, I'm going to share a few poems. And I made whatever is in this book at school. And that's when I started learning how to do poetry. And eventually, I'm like, you know what? I really like this. And I could use this as like a way of doing my own like, coping mechanism. And I started. And you know what? It helped a lot. So... I have three poems in this, and I have 12 poems in this, but I won't read all of them, but I'll read a few, just to see if any of you guys can relate, and also to help anyone who needs it, because I care about everyone, even if I don't have a good relationship with them. For some reason, I still would be there to help them, which is kind of stupid, but you know what? It's fine. But, so, this one is a narrative poem that I read in, that I wrote, not writ, that I wrote in school. It's called The Wish. I used to be really lonely in elementary school, like, horribly. So, this is what that's based off of. It was a long day, a very difficult day, a school day. I had broken sleep and woke up rough. I didn't want to leave my bed, but I had to go to school. People were mean, and I had no friends. It was like I was the embodiment of lonely. It was haunting me, and everyone could see it. So they would stay from me, stay away from me. It would make me feel sad, mad even. I just wish I had friends. That was going to be my first wish. On my way home, I found a field of dandelions, so I made a wish. A wish to be free, free from this world. This world that really hates me. This world that avoids being around me. I wish to have friends, to not have lonely following me everywhere. Lonely is mold. It is. It stays and is difficult to make go. I hate being lonely. I hate this world that hates me. I wish to be free. And I went home and hoped for my wish to come true. My bed was soft, warm. I felt like I could drown in my mattress and fell asleep. That was the first one. I'm pretty sure at least some of you guys can relate to being lonely. I hated being lonely. And it's one of the reasons why I'm such a people pleaser now. Because the second I get friends, I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to lose you. So I always try my best. Sorry, I'm also kind of tired. So if I sound sad, I'm not. It's just my tired voice, basically. And then this one is a lyric poem <laughs> that I made about depression. This was almost like me journaling in a way, but for school things. But I relate to this horribly, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys can too. Because everyone has their own problems. And so many people in this world struggle with depression. And it's just, ha. So, depression is like a trapdoor when I just want to get out, but I can't move. Because of all the weight of this horrid world. Depression is like a room with moving walls. As the world around me beats me and ruins my life, the walls shrink. Until one day, you die in that room. Depression robs you of feeling relaxed or happy. It steals your will to live. It traps you in that room. Not being able to hear anything but people screaming and the thoughts of your broken mind. I forgot what it feels like to enjoy life. There are those moments, after two years in between, 
Depression makes speak weak seem useless. I've gotten way too close to having close walls. I feel alone and lost. Depression can rob you of almost everything. Depre depression is like that horrible, just like fear that you constantly have in the bottom of your heart and in the back of your mind. It is one of the worst things that can ever happen to someone and it is so hard to dig out of. But eventually you will get out of it. Some people don't. And I know some people out there have lost some people who haven't been able to dig out of that hole. And I feel horrible for those people. I got close to that. I left it and I'm still here. And I am so happy that I didn't. Because if I had, I would have not met any of my subscribers and I would not have this amazing YouTube channel that helps me feel motivated to live my life longer and for me to possibly help others. And this one is a free verse poem that I made that is basically based off of the first time I went to Florida and I saw the beach for the first time and oh my lord was it beautiful and I was it was it was awesome. The sky was beautiful in the sunset light going to the beach for the first time was so wonderful in that sunset light. The sound of the ocean waves put me in a different place, a new reality. I had been needing that feeling. My family was happy, and so was I. Not as happy as them, but still with a sparkle in my eye. The wind was warm and soft. The sand was as bright as the orange. Nope, that was wrong. And the sand was a bright orange because of the colors of the sky. I was at peace for the first time in years. I was genuinely happy. The world was silent besides the waves. I was so happy to be there on that memorable day. I loved going to the beach for the first time. That was just like absolutely wonderful. So that wasn't my journal. This one is. These ones are the ones that get a little bit deeper. Like, these ones apparently are already pretty deep, but these ones really get into my feelings. So, I'm only going to read a few of them because there are some of them that if I read them, you guys would be worried. So, let's see. I'm going to guess that a lot of people are um, the therapist friend. Which I am. So I'm going to read a poem that I made called The Therapist That Needs Therapy. It is two pages long. And it's pretty relatable. So here goes nothing. Swarming tornadoes in my mind. Then getting a message from a friend that needs to find hope. Quickly, pack it all away. Put them first, help them. So then they can have a smooth life, a safe life. The sort of life that you want. But you know it seems like you can't, that you won't, that you can't get that life. Another message about a different problem. You want to help, but you also want to tell them to go away. But you don't know, but you know that's not what you do. What about me? No, you're more important. But I'm wanting to kill myself. But I don't want that for you. I, I don't want to be attention-seeking. You come first. This is all about you. I, I have enough to deal with. But I'll stack your problems on mine for you. I can't do this to myself. But I want to help. Help me. A lot of therapist friends out there usually don't ever get checked on, and I feel horrible for those people, because usually when I have friends who always ask me for pro my problems, the first question I ask them is, are you the therapist friend? Most of the time, they say yes. So I'm like, okay, first, how are you doing? 
And usually, of, of course, they're like, well, I'm doing just fine. There's nothing wrong with me. When obviously there's something wrong, but because they're the therapist friend, they don't want to announce it. But I don't know how, but eventually I get something out of peop out of some people, and apparently it makes me a really good friend, and it, that makes me happy. <sighs> I'm gonna do anxi anxiety, cause everyone, everyone in this world has at least a little bit of anxiety. Also, just look at the title that just that says a lot like that right there with like all that scramble I, mm, that's my mind <laughs> like especially when you're overthinking it's just going 50 miles per hour like Aww. damn all right the hammer is back beating inside my chest my head is full of fog and it, it but still burns my lungs frosty won't move i can't breathe i can't stop thinking one thing after another what did I do? Was it me? I can't focus. Let's think. Think about flowers. The flowers are pretty. Fire. Burning. The flowers aren't flowers anymore. Fuck. What else? Dogs? They're dead. My leg is going 50 miles per hour. My fingers are bleeding. What did she say? Oh god. I have work to do. I don't have motivation. I can't focus. Shit. I'm a failure. Everyone is disappointed. I'm going off track. Focus. I can't. I'm going to pass out. I will die. Music. Music. That's what I need. I need... I need music. I can see again. <laughs> Letting you know all that right there. That was acting. I promise. <laughs> I think even the shaky breath. That was... Speaking of music... I also made a poem called Music. So, why don't I read that? So, it just like, goes perfectly with it. This, um, I might read one more after this, and then I will post this video, because I can make more poems, and I could possibly make this a series. <gasps> you... I'll make a post about that. I'll, like, ask a question. Should I make my poem reading a series? You guys can also give me suggestions on poems to make. Or, like, if you want to hear a poem about something that you're going through, but you don't know how to do poetry, you can send me that, and then I can see if I can make the right words for you. That'd be awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you heard that, that was my brother. He's playing a game. Sorry. So this one is called music. When I listen to music, it swarms my mind. My head feels clear and I can see. It brings me to another reality. I feel free, safe for once, happy to live, and it kills time. It helps me get through daily life. Music is my savior. It helps me, it helps me on, on a daily. It's the way I get by. Thank you music for this life. Music has always been the like basically the only coping skill that I've ever had. So usually when people ask me what my coping skills are, I'll be like music, like listening to music, and they're like, okay, what else? And I'm like listening to music. <laughs> but I have this now, which is whoa. All right. Hmm. I can't decide if I want to do the popular kind of lonely or fake face. I could do both. Or could you? I'll do both. And if you guys just want to skip off the video, go ahead, be my guest. I don't, I don't mind. You never have to watch the full video. Anyway, so I'll read a fake face first. When you really might cry, when you really feel like you want to die, but you don't want others to know, you fake a smile. You put on a mask. But you don't want others to know you fake a smile you put on a mask you show a fake face when you get that far there's no going back your face can't ever relax you forget what it feels like to relax entirely and if you don't smile for one second are you okay you look depressed what's wrong 
And you don't want to hear that. That's what a fake face is for. You gotta be careful putting on that mask. A lot of people have a fake face. I know everyone has one of those days where they put on the fake face. And then, the second they don't, like at school, I have a friend, anytime I'm not smiling slightly, he's like, you look a little more depressed today. And I'm like, thanks. Wonderful, thank you. And he, usually he's like, are you okay? You look, you look, you look, you look depressed. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. <laughs> the popular kind of lonely. This is how I feel every day during school. Luckily, today was my last day of school. Woo. Awesome. The popular kind of lonely. Even popular people are lonely. Like, the second they go home. And no one really notices that. Like, they don't really ever think about that. Like, they'll go to you. Like, people will go up to you and be like, Oh my god, you have so many friends. You're so popular, and that's awesome. And you're like, well, you can't really tell them that you're not popular. But then again, you go home, and you overthink. And this is usually what you say. You know when a lot of people know your name? And you have a lot of friends, but only a few people actually care? You say hi a lot, but would they notice if you were gone? Only those few people actually do. The ace, let's go! You ace! One second. Show, you can ace. Sorry. Alright. My brother's playing a game and he tends to put on both headphones. Anyways, let me restart that. You know when a lot of people know your name and you have a lot of friends, but only a few people actually care? You say hi a lot, but would they notice if you were gone? Only those few people actually do. People say you're popular and you can't tell them they're wrong. But you still don't believe that people actually don't want to see you. Don't want you to die. Want to see you happy. Would be there for you no matter the cost. So many people say they would, but would they really? What if people only hang out with you to use you from everything you have left? What if they had... Yeah. <laughs> what if they hang out with you because they think you're cool? What if they don't really care? I feel lonely even with all these people by my side. How is that possible? It's the popular kind. The popular kind of lonely. That's definitely going to be my last poem. But, yeah. So... Apparently, my poems are really relatable to a lot of people, which one makes me feel bad for people, too. It also makes me happy that I can write things that people can read or possibly listen to and be like, oh my god, those are the words that I have been searching for and haven't been able to find. And I hope that I can do that for some people, at least. And if you ever want me to write a poem of yours or like write a poem that you want to hear but you don't know how to write I can do that or you can give me suggestions on a poem to write which would be cool and or I can make this a series and like as my days go by and I make more poems I can post a video every once in a while about those poems that I have made so I hope that this helped in some way. I also hope that you enjoyed at least reading. I know that it was probably at least a little bit boring, but I hope it wasn't that boring. I hope you didn't fall asleep during what, like watching this, but let me know what you guys think I should do. If I should stop reading poems, if I should continue, you decide. I will follow whatever you guys want me to do. Thank you for watching.